everyone, welcome to Busan. Good day everyone and thanks for tuning in. My Korean experience continues in this episode and is absolutely freezing this morning. So let's get going and see what we're up to today, shall we? And good morning guys. I'm coming to you from an absolutely freezing morning here in Seoul. And uh, yeah, behind me you see Seoul Station. This is the central railway station which serves this gigantic city of Seoul. And today, what I'm doing is I'm getting on board my first ever bullet train experience to get from Seoul to South Korea's second largest city in Busan in the south of the country. So without further ado, let's get this exciting experience started today. Let's do this. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home and I create heaps of travel and food related content. On this trip, you saw me flying here with Jetstar in business class from Sydney, then I ate through Seoul. I'm heading to Busan today and this trip continues in Thailand and Sri Lanka as well. Before I head back to Australia utterly exhausted but extremely satisfied with what I've achieved. If you like this sort of content, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon so you won't miss another exciting episode of this trip. Giving me a like will also encourage me to keep prodding along to keep producing more of these videos. Here's a thanks because your support is very much appreciated. Welcome to Seoul Station. This modern looking facility was opened in 2004 to coincide with the introduction of high-speed rail services by KTX. Therefore, Seoul Station is the terminus station for most KTX lines including the one we're on to Busan. In case you're wondering, KTX stands for Korea Train Express. Otherwise, it's normally referred to in Konglish as KTX. South Korea's main traffic corridor is really just between Seoul and Busan. This busy spine will cover up to 80% of the country's population. This corridor also accounts for the majority of freight and passenger routes on mainland South Korea. This goes a long way to explain why a bullet train leaves Seoul for Busan every 7 to 10 minutes. And that is my train leaving at 8 am. The grab-and-go foodie culture is very prominent. I was hoping to meet some pushcart vendors by the road, but no such luck this morning. So you'll have lots of convenience stalls and bakeries on the main level like this one. There are no meals on the train, so better pack some for the journey down south. On the departure screens earlier on, it stated every train today was leaving Seoul with a delay time of 0 minutes. And they mean it. The trains here depart and arrive on time with military precision. The KTX trains utilize platforms 3 to 14. So make sure you're not boarding the train from the wrong platform. This is the rolling stock zipping us to Busan. It is a KTX-1 which is based on the French-designed TGV Réseau high-speed train. This one is partly built in France and South Korea and has remained the workhorse for KTX services since 2004. We will slice through the tracks at a maximum speed of 305 km per hour. Depending on time of day, a typical KTX service has up to 20 train cars so be sure to arrive on your train car 5 to 10 minutes beforehand because you could be walking along the platform for a while. I was booked into first class this morning and upon entering the cabin, I was a tad disappointed at how utilitarian it all looked. Configuration is in a 2x2 
and the single aisle is wide enough for you to be dragging your luggage, which can be stored overhead if needed. The seat itself looked comfy enough, and today's upholstery is in blue. I've seen several versions of this in flaming red. I think I much prefer this muted colour, especially this early in the morning. Each seat comes with an extremely bright adjustable reading lamp overhead. Man, this will definitely frighten the bats away. We're also given a KTX magazine, but I don't read Korean. So we just sat there looking pretty the entire journey. The tray table folds up like that, and once it's deployed, the position is fixed. It's extremely sturdy though, and here's the all-important footrest to ensure maximum comfort. Seat pitch is similar to a premium economy on an airplane. And this is the recline situation. I'd call it adequate rather than comfortable. But given the average lengths of these train rides, this is totally understandable. You're supposed to get to your destination quickly. And this is not a long drawn luxury train. Korea has no time for that. Coat hooks and charging ports are located at the pillars between windows. So if your seat has a full window, Unfortunately, you do not get to juice up your devices. So make sure you have a power bank, or if your skin is thick enough like me, just ask the person sitting in front to charge your phone for you. Koreans are too polite to turn you down. On the dot at 8am, we pulled away very silently as if we were floating along a magic carpet. Pre-recorded announcements were made in Korean, Mandarin and Japanese. At just under 400 kilometers, this line from Seoul to Busan is the network's longest. We will make 8 stops along the way, and the total journey today will be a zippy 2 hours 45 minutes. For the train geeks out there, KTX trains run on standard gauge tracks. The building you see there is 63 square. It was built as a landmark for the Seoul Olympic Games in 1988 as the torch was lit in front of the building to commemorate the Games. It remains one of the few skyscrapers in the world today to be clad fully in gold. The ridership on the Seoul Busan KTX continues to climb year on year. This has resulted in domestic air traffic dropping drastically over the years, especially at provincial domestic airports. However, passenger flights between Seoul and Busan are still sustainable because of the high numbers, with five airlines going neck to neck with KTX vying for passengers travelling between these two city pairs. We're now pooling into Guangmyong, where the empty seats around me would start to get filled up. And this was where things got interesting. See, a guy came up to me and pointed at my seat. He started saying something and I replied, I'm sorry I don't speak Korean. I then whipped out my phone to show him a mobile ticket. Communication between us going forward hinged on the only four English words he knew how to speak. Me, you, yes, and no. He placed one hand on his chest and slowly said, Me? Yes. He pointed to me and said, You? No. My first reaction was, What the hell is he going on about? He emphasized again, this time pointing at my phone, and his finger circled around the car number, and he repeated, You? No. He then pointed above the glass door in front of the cabin, which had the car number, and he once again emphasized, Me? Yes. You? No. Buying this ticket directly from KTX was virtually impossible from outside of Korea. 
so my first class ticket was purchased via a third party website. My first thought was, shit, I've been scammed. On closer inspection of my ticket, it suddenly dawned on me that I've been sitting in the wrong car all this time. So my disappointment of this being in first class was misplaced. I quickly gathered my belongings, red-faced and apologetic, and hastily went looking for the correct car. Welcome to first class on the KTX. If the ride was quiet in standard class back there, it's even quieter now, insulated by this luxurious thick carpet beneath my feet. It's also very spaciously configured in a 1x2, giving us lots of wriggle room to do a song and dance. First class amenities included these three bottles of water because god forbid should a passenger seated in this cabin be dehydrated. I would have preferred a water dispenser to reduce single-use plastics though. But in case you forget your own water bottle, it's good to know you won't have to drink from a tap in a toilet. Books are also available for your perusal. And before you go on about who the hell still reads these days, I saw several passengers take the time to read these books placed here, although they're all only in Korean. Let's settle down into the first class seat, which is a lot wider than the seat I was in before. Leg room is extremely generous and this is an understatement. Being seated next to a pillar, I now have access to power points and USB ports. Happy days! The recline of this cushy seat is also a lot more. And paired together with a footrest, it is indeed an absolutely comfortable place to be. The tray table is exactly the same size as standard class. But because of the amazing pitch, it is now a lot further from you and the table can't be moved back and forth once it is deployed. There is no restaurant car on the KTX, as the trains are optimized for high capacity transportation. So most passengers would BYO food and drinks from the station they boarded from. But be sensible about it. Make sure your food isn't heavily scented or hearty gravy stews or soups. So this isn't a place to have a full meal. This morning, I'm tucking into what's perhaps the most delicious egg mayonnaise sandwich I've ever had. I bought this from Paris Croissant at Seoul Station, otherwise known in Konglish as Pali Kurasang. I wonder what is their secret? Today's journey, besides the usual motivation from being a travel junkie, was also tracking the footsteps of one of my all-time favorite zombie movies. In case you've been living under a rock, train to Busan took the world by storm and kickstarted the Korean film industry into the zombie horror genre in 2016. Everywhere I look, as soon as I arrived in Seoul Station, getting on board the train, sitting down and absorbing the environment around me, was a reminder of where parts of the movie were filmed. And here we are at the halfway point of the journey. We're pulling into Daejeon Station, and just like the survivors in the movie as they desperately tried to flee southwards away from Seoul. Thankfully, we weren't met with growls, groans and bloody bites. But this being so early in the morning on a weekday, my fellow passengers might as well be in the early stages of the infection, mostly looking lifeless and asleep. Toilets on board the KTX are kept relatively clean. Either that or the Koreans are just very considerate users of public facilities. You have large mirrors with these show business makeup lights so you can play pretend you're Liza Minnelli backstage. Tap water gushes out at a very comfortable temperature and here is a soap dispenser. Above the toilet bowl is another mirror to give this room an illusion of space. 
There are also step-by-step -step instructions and pictured illustrations on how to operate this door in both Korean and English. Step 1 Step 2 Don't step on any poo By the way, complimentary snack packs are provided for first-class passengers containing a nut mix, packets of orange biscuits, and a sanitizing wet wipe. And you can take as many as you want. Within reason, of course. With the train travelling at the full speed of over 300 km per hour, you can tell from the packaging how there is so little vibration coming from the train. The ride is as smooth as silk. Besides a slight hum, there is very little track noise. The definition of a bullet train means this method of transportation can cover large distances in minimal amount of time with great efficiency. Before you know it, we're now pulling into Ulsan, the final stop before we reach Busan. This is the perfect time for a summary of my thoughts. The convenience of a city centre to city centre train ride cannot be underscored further. Especially so when you're referring to bullet trains like this one. KTX has been so successful in South Korea, it has come at the cost of domestic air travel. With the exception of flights from Seoul to Busan and Jeju Island, elsewhere in the country, travellers have opted to take the train instead of fly. With the arrival of Korean low-cost carriers, it has revived some provincial domestic airports once again, but the appeal of KTX can't be denied. Especially during peak hours, the journey time between Seoul and Busan is actually faster by train, which boggles my mind sometimes. And the train ride is extremely comfortable. Public transportation in South Korea is excellent because loud conversations are frowned upon and you won't hear mobile phones pinging away. If they do, they are shut off in quick time. Frequent departures of these trains mean zipping back and forth will ensure you'll never be late for an appointment at either side. Not to mention, the massive reduction of carbon footprint per person, high-speed rail travel is definitely a godsend in a crowded country like South Korea. FYI, I paid roughly about 100 Australian dollars for this trip one way. It would have cost me the same to fly with Korean Air. But this was so much more convenient and frankly a lot more enjoyable because I didn't have to deal with airport security. Not to mention my hotel was just across the road from Seoul Station. For now, I'm eager to arrive into Busan and continue my experience of firsts in South Korea's second largest city. Everyone, welcome to Busan. And this was the amazing KTX bullet train from Seoul. It was such a comfortable ride. I mean, it was so quiet, it was so quick, and the whole journey has only taken us um, two hours, 45 minutes. So we are right here, 10.45, right bang on time. The arrival, um, not a minute less, not a minute over. We arrive right on time at 10.45. So, I mean, what did you think of that service? Did you like it? I mean, to be honest, I mean, coming from a country of Australia, I, I just wish we had something like this, which is so convenient um, to connect us uh, between major city centers. Uh, this would be perfect though. But I mean, hey, it is what it is, right? Um, this is Korea for you. Everything's efficient, modern, and yeah, this is the KTX for you. 
So I'm going to spend a day in Busan before heading back to Seoul um, later this afternoon. And yeah, all this can be done in a day. So, I mean, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the KTX train. And uh, I will leave details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So, um, check me a follow there so you can actually see where am I traveling to in real time. And um, of course, more importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap that bell notification icon so you know every time I get on board another fancy train like this one. Alright, in the meantime, take care all of you and I'll see you around for my next video. Bye!